So much for those underdogs being 6-3-1 and one with four outright winners over the previous five years. And final four action, two favorites, two double-digit wins yesterday as Nova and North Carolina deliver. I'm glad to say that I was on North Carolina yesterday, so I'm a happy guy. And listen, guys, if you follow me regularly and you saw when I listed my play yesterday was on the North Carolina Syracuse game, was there any doubt in your mind that I was going against my boy Jim Beheim yesterday? There shouldn't have been. You should have known better. Hey, listen, so with both favorites covering yesterday, that means uh, the favorites extended their overwhelming uh, dominance so far in the tournament. The latest numbers going into that little game on Monday night for the title. Well, you've got now favorites 37, 27, and 2 against the spread. A commanding 10-game edge versus the odds makers. I will say, however, of course, 27 of those uh, underdogs, 15 of them did win outright. What, you've got North Carolina about one and a half, two points over Villanova uh, for Monday's early line. But hey, that is tomorrow. We'll talk about it then. Today, let's talk a little baseball before I get to your complimentary plays. As I've said many, many times, baseball is without a doubt the easiest sport to win money in. It's always been that way, at least for me personally, as I have won uh, 14 of the past 18 seasons. But I find it the best sport to bet on because of the length of the season. Now, a lot of guys in this business will hang up their shingle that they've gone out for fishing, you know, right after the Super Bowl or right after Monday night's game. They don't even stick around for the NBA playoffs. God forbid if they should stick around for baseball too. They just don't want to put the time and the effort into it. However, you know, it's the time and effort that makes you a winner come baseball season because what I found, even though it's the dog days of summer, baseball is the easiest sport to bet and make money on because you have patterns that develop. You have consistency. You have teams playing generally five to six games, if not sometimes seven games a week. You've got three and four game series. You've got pitchers going that you like every fourth or fifth day. So the patterns, the consistency, that's what makes NBA playoffs such a bettable thing and such a great thing to win money because you notice patterns developing in best of seven series. Well, imagine that and extend it out on a number of months for baseball. Two schools of thought, and I'm going to repeat something that I mentioned in a video report earlier this week. Two schools of thought, I think, and I can't tell you which one is better when it comes to picking a handicapper for baseball. I mean, you can go with a guy who has consistently won you money for months, no matter the sport. How about Trace Adams? Yesterday, he was one of the two featured discounted plays. Steve Budin's Cali Cartel, the other. Adams cashing in with Villanova. Uh, the Cali Cartel for Budin, another 100-dime winner. As they cashed in with North Carolina, you got them both at huge discounted prices. Adams has made $1 betters. Well over 55 grand, guys, over the past six, seven months now. It's just been a phenomenal run. In fact, if I had to look up, <laughs> you got to love the fact that this is always, uh, I always point out this is a uh, live video. You know, I'm doing this and it's just recording and it gets posted almost automatically. I just wanted to double check and actually see where his profit stands because I hate to shortchange the guy who has been without a doubt the hottest handicapper here at the site over the uh, past six months or so. But yes, uh Oh, I did shortchange him. <laughs> Those $1 betters after his latest 2,000 star double your wager winner yesterday, number 12 out of 15 short term, number 28 out of 38 long term on Villanova. Well, those $1 betters have actually won well over $62 thousand dollars in nearly a six-month period. So you can go with somebody like that. You can go with somebody like uh, Brad Wilton, who's also had a great run, a guy like Jeff Benton, who has also had a great run. Or you can turn to guys who have historically turned profits in baseball season. Like I said, a guy like me, I've won 14 of the past 18 baseball seasons. Uh, Brad Wilton, uh, since making his debut at this site uh, back in, I think it was uh, February of 2013, $10 betters have won $22,035. $10 betters last year in baseball made $9,965. So you go with a guy like that who has done it short term. You go with a guy like Chris Jordan who made $1 betters last year in baseball a little over $5,100. I can't tell you if one way is better than the other. I mean, you got a guy like Jeff Benton. Last year wasn't the greatest of baseball seasons. He only won $10 betters, a little over $3,900. 
But the past two years combined, those $10 vendors have won over $10,700. So do you take guys who have been on extended, long-term winning streaks where they've consistently turned profit no matter the sport? Or do you go and turn to guys who have historically always won in a particular sport? Frankly, I think you can flip a coin and there's no heads or tails that really matter here. It's a, flip a split decision right down the middle, and I don't think it really matters Again, it's a long season. You know, you're looking to turn a profit consistently over the long haul. Uh, I think during the course of the season, you're going to find guys get on tremendous runs, and then they, you know, they hit the skids, or suddenly they start just treading water. Again, I can only present you the numbers, and without a doubt, Wilton's made more than anybody else. Benton has followed. Chris Jordan's coming off short-term success. I've had long-term success. If I didn't mention any of the other handicappers, it's because they either barely broke even last year or they had down years. And that's my tutorial on baseball. The other thing I will just remind you once more before I get to your complimentary place, key with baseball, um, you got to look at run lines. You must look at run line options every single day in baseball. You know, it's not like the old days where when you had an ace on the hill, a Roger Clemens, a Tom Seaver, and Tom, a Steve Carlton going back earlier, uh, Randy Johnson during his prime. You know, those days you used to always have those pitchers laying 260, 270, middle of the season at home. Nowadays, you can have a mediocre pitcher who's the number three or four guy in your rotation, and if he's pitching at home with a team that's won five, Five out of six games, he could be laying 180. You know, I have a personal cap here for the handicappers. They're not allowed to release plays of $1.60 or more because you don't need to pay for professional advice to be told to bet an overwhelming favor. Fact is, most guys rarely get even close to 150. And you'll see a preponderance of plays here on the run line because that's how you've got to bet baseball nowadays. You're taking the overwhelming favorites that you like and you're making them a manageable chalk or making them a slight underdog of $1.10, $1.20. Nothing wrong with that. A lot of guys say, oh, you got to bet the dogs in baseball. Got to bet the dogs in baseball. They're the same guys who say you probably had to bet the dogs in the final four, too. How did that turn out? It's all cyclical, guys. You never can fall for that. You have to take every game, every day, every week, every betting situation as a standalone event. Now, there are two baseball games here for today's card. You've got the opening game between uh, St. Louis and Pittsburgh, uh, which is going to be played, oh, what? weather conditions around 40 degrees with blustery winds, or you can go and take a look at the game at Tropicana Field indoors between Toronto and Tampa. I can't say either one of the games really are outstanding contests, but they're the games that I'm going to deal with here with your complimentary plays. And I'm going to take a look at the game between Pittsburgh and St. Louis. Listen, Francisco Liriano, oops, excuse me, just whacked the desk, which meant the camera was going to shake. Uh, Francisco Liriano was going for the Pirates today. Uh, he had a 3.71 earn run average and four starts against the Cardinals last year, which actually raised his lifetime ERA against St. Louis in a dozen career starts to 2.58. Going against Adam Wainwright, who was once again anchoring the St. Louis rotation early in the season, tore his Achilles tendon, made a really remarkable comeback to pitch in relief late in the season and into the playoffs. Um, he's going for St. Louis. You know, here's my thing. I love playing Adam Wainwright, and I love playing him on the road, and the numbers certainly back him up. You know, Wainwright, five starts on the road last year, limited number of starts 0 0.69 earned run average he is 22 and 9 in 40 outings on the road over the past three years 37 of those 40 outings were starts with a 2.42 earned run average but here is the achilles heel no pun intended for my play on adam wainwright and my consideration for him today Pitching in Pittsburgh, eh, that's not a strong point for Adam Wainwright. 5.15 uh, lifetime earn run average in 14 appearances in Pittsburgh, 11 of them uh, starts. He's never really pitched well against Pittsburgh either. Yes, he's got an 11 6 uh, record, 11 and 6, but his earn run average in those outings, 4.29. Um, he started the past two years for St. Louis with 13 total scoreless innings in those outings against the Cubs last season, the Reds two years ago. Liriano making a, another, I think, the third straight opening day start for him as well. Problem with Liriano, at home last year, Pittsburgh's PNC Park served up a lot of home runs, had a 4.44 earn run average in 17 home starts last year versus 
2.27 and 14 road starts. Both these guys were so-so during spring training. Right now, you're looking at a price in this game of Pittsburgh minus $1.20. I don't think St. Louis is going to be as good as it has been in previous years. You just don't remove two key starters from your rotation. John Lackey abandoning them and signing as a free agent with the Cubbies. Lance Lynn suffering a season-ending knee injury. I know St. Louis is deep, and the Cardinals always come up with these guys to replace everybody else. It's the last man up for them. But uh, in this particular spot, I just can't go against Adam Wainwright, so I'm going to give it a shot. Go with Wainwright only because of his consistency on the road, although, again, I will point out that he has not pitched extremely well at PNC Park over the years, but I will go with Wainwright and the Cardinals plus ten as your complimentary play. The other game, Tampa Bay and uh, Toronto. Listen, I handicapped the game. Let me just tell you a couple of things. It's going to be Marcus Stroman going up against Chris Archer. You know, Archer had a... Um, 3.23 earned run average in 34 starts last year, a career high 212 innings pitch, number four in the major leagues in terms of strikeouts with 252. Um, but he only, only was 12 and 13. And listen, he made 18 starts at home last year. His personal record, despite a 3.11 earned run average, was 3 and 8. And the team went 9 and 9 in those 18 starts. He did get out of the gates like gangbusters last year. Five April starts, 0.84 earned run average. Uh, Marcus Stroman only made four starts in the regular season last year because he suffered a knee injury. Um, I'll tell you what, I, I like the Blue Jays in this spot here today. Um, I think that Stroman is coming off a very nice spring training in his four starts. He had a 1.98 earned run average with 12 strikeouts and no walks and 13 and two-third innings. Only gave up 10 hits in those outings. I'm going to go with Toronto. Pick him situation because the Blue Jays have an offense and Tampa Bay doesn't. And of the two complementary plays, I think Toronto at pick him at Tampa is a slightly stronger play than St. Louis and Wainwright. And FYI, one other thing. I always will do and always encourage you to do the same thing. Specify the pitchers. <laughs> always specify the pitchers. There's no logic in not specifying the pitchers because if you're betting the team, aren't you betting the pitcher? Isn't that why you think you're going to win a game because how the pitcher is going to perform? The last thing you want to be doing is betting a team and then suddenly watching that pitcher that you're banking your money on not go and your money goes bye-bye. So always specify pitchers, and you're going to find the majority of the handicappers here at the site do as well. So again, your complimentary plays, Toronto is going to be number one, and the St. Louis Cardinals going to be number two. That'll do it, guys. I wish you well, and I'll talk to you again tomorrow for that little game between Villanova and North Carolina when we do this one more time.